Donald Trump celebrating, as you might imagine, the court's decision, hoping to use it to get rid of all of the cases against him. CNN's Elena Treen has more on this. Uh, Trump is offering a bit of a preview, I think, of what's to come. He's been all over social media uh, talking about the decision. That's right. And in recent days there, he's actually ramped up his rhetoric, uh, calling for retribution against his political enemies. And look, this is this language from Donald Trump isn't exactly new. He has been uh, calling for retribution for several months now and really made it um, a big part of his campaign. However, in light of the Supreme Court's decision, especially saying that, you know, presidents have absolute immunity for official acts, it has called into question whether or not if Donald Trump were to seek retribution as a president, what that would mean and if he could face any blowback for it. Now, we did hear Donald Trump yesterday uh, speaking to a local radio station in Virginia, criticizing uh, Steve Bannon, his former aide, for going to federal prison for contempt of Congress. And he said Biden is going to pay a big price for it. Take a listen to what he said. What they've done in this country is unthinkable. And Biden is going to pay a big price for it, I believe, because I think that the people are going to say, well, wow, you've opened up a Pandora's box. It's a terrible thing that they've opened up. They've unleashed this. This is the third world countries. No, they've they've wanted to silence Steve Bannon. And the only the way they could do it was by putting him in jail. Now, uh, Donald Trump also over the weekend in a much more troubling post called uh, for Liz Cheney, or I should say he reposted uh, a true social post saying that Liz Cheney should face military tribunals. I'm going to read for you some of what this post said. It said, quote, Elizabeth Lynn Cheney is guilty of treason. Read truth if you want military tribunals. Now, we did hear from Cheney herself, the former congresswoman. She wrote that this is the type of thing that demonstrates yet again that you are not a stable adult and are not fit for office. We also saw Donald Trump share a different post calling for the jailing of President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, his former uh, Vice President Mike Pence. Again, all very troubling posts that I think it's hard with Donald Trump. We know that a lot of people kind of take this as just language he uses, rhetoric he uses. However, many of his strongest and fiercest supporters do read these posts and take them in some ways as marching orders. Now, we also heard from President Joe Biden at the White House yesterday uh, denouncing this type of language as well as criticizing the Supreme Court's decision on immunity. Um, and he's also made this central to his campaign. But again, I really do think that all of this is getting heightened attention after that decision particularly with many critics worried about whether or not Donald Trump is emboldened by this decision and may further seek retribution if he is elected. Sarah? Yeah, it should be noted. There are no criminal cases against Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, but he's already talking about jailing them. Uh, alarming, to say the least. Thank you so much, Elena Treen. Appreciate it. John? Let me just ask you, because Donald Trump on his social media over the last few days uh, posted or reposted something that said that Liz Cheney should be tried for yeah. treason in a televised military tribunal. Does the Supreme Court ruling, how does that impact how you view that? Well, it's gotten darker. I mean, look, you know, every time Donald Trump posts something, everybody's just like, LOL, he's not serious. Like, first off, do we really want a president who nobody takes seriously, but like, in this, you should. Well, uh, Donald Trump, uh, Peter Baker, is expressing support for holding televised military tribunals against former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney. The former president reposted this image on his Truth Social account on Sunday. It reads, quote, Liz Cheney is guilty of treason. Read truth if you want televised military tribunals. In response, Cheney wrote on X, quote, Donald is the type of this is the type of thing that demonstrates yet again that you are not a stable adult and you are not fit for office. Of course, we've had that conversation, Peter Baker, about um, all those who are calling for Joe Biden uh, to step down, worried about his fitness and just letting all of this go by. Um, it's not that let, let it go by, but they don't make it like a. a a call for him to step down and a call for Americans to look at his fitness. We'll put that aside for a second. And I ask you, should Donald Trump be taken seriously about his threats? Can we look at his 
first or second campaign and the promises he made and then the things that he followed through on and draw to that as knowing that his pattern would be the answer is yes. Yeah, I, I think we should take Donald Trump seriously. I think what we learned in his first term was that he obviously likes to say a lot of things that are provocative that he may not follow up on. But then on some of the things he says that are po provocative, he does follow up on. And some of the things he says that were provocative that he didn't follow up on were only because he was surrounded at the time by more establishment Republicans or figures, military officers and so forth, who discouraged him, talked him out of it, threw sand in the gear, whatever, made sure it didn't happen. These are not people who will be there in a second term. We know that. So when he he says he's for termination of the Constitution in order to return to power. When he says his uh, new term in office would be about retribution, when he says that Liz Cheney should be put on a military trial, I think you have to assume that he's, he's serious about that and he won't have people around him who will try to stop him. And now the question is, of course, about accountability. One thing that this ruling does is it, re enforces, it, re it reinforces the fact that we have not figured out the proper way, an, an effective way to hold a chief executive accountable in this country. We've now learned that in impeachment doesn't work. Right. As long as the president's party has at least one third of the members of the Senate, no president is ever going to be convicted in an impeachment trial. That's very clear. Certainly Donald Trump is not going to be afraid of impeachment if he's in office again. Uh, and so that's not really a form of accountability anymore. The courts obviously have failed in four years since the last election to tell us whether or not his attempt to overturn an election was illegal or not. It's taken four years and we don't have an answer to that. So I think we're at a point right now where uh, the system is being rewritten and front of our eyes and Donald Trump plans to push the boundaries as far as he can. So Jen, let's connect what we saw at the top of the hour coming in. Speaker Mike Johnson suggesting, oh, don't be so alarmist. It's outrageous to suggest that Donald Trump would do anything criminal to push the boundaries. As if like we an insurrection. As right. if he, we haven't been right. watching the last uh, five, six years of this show or 10 years almost now. Um, and what we saw there, that reposting of the call for military tribunals. Like, I don't even know what that is, for but he'll figure it out. For treason against Liz Cheney. The idea that he wouldn't and will not push this as far as he possibly can, that's actually what's outrageous. Right. I mean, he will he will find a secretary of defense that will comes up with some yeah. justification for a military tribunal that somehow Liz Cheney is subjected to and, and go forward with it. I mean, Joyce, I'm going to ask for your opinion, which I know you would like to... <laughs> Lawyers like to stay in facts, but um, there are some important details and um, you know, kind of niceties even about the about the opinion yesterday that um, suggests that the court thinks there's some ways that he should be reined in. But you know, as more of a layperson, it just that this court continues to disappoint us when it comes to upholding uh, norms and standards. And it just yesterday it just felt to me as like they will never tell him no. They will never like we can never rely on this court to hold him accountable in any way. There just aren't any guardrails. What it, you know, this you know, 12, 18 hours after or whatever. Uh, how do you looking at this at this court and what we need to brace for uh, with them uh, guarding a Trump presidency? So look, as someone who studies and teaches about democratic institutions, I just don't have any good news for you in that regard. This is a deeply disappointing opinion from the court. And good to have you with us. So you had actually signed on to a brief earlier this year, arguing presidential immunity should not shield Trump from prosecution over his actions while in office. So how do you feel about today's decision? I think today's decision, um, <clears throat> for the most part, and largely anticipated that they would draw a line I was pretty clear from the oral argument and from the precedents that they were working with, particularly U.S. versus Nixon and Fitzgerald, that uh, that line would uh, have something to do with the official acts, uh, that they were going to do something like that. I think they went a little further than I anticipated. I'm disappointed a little bit in, uh, and confused a bit by the um, elimination of the Jeffrey Clark piece of the case and also the inability to use evidence pertaining to uh, official acts with regard to some of the crimes, but they were always going to draw a constitutional line here, a separation of powers line, um, and they and they drew it, and it's a it's a tight line, but it's not a line that eliminates this case. Jack Smith can proceed, uh, um, you know, should he decide to, and I'm mm -hmm. sure he will, uh, in some form, uh, whether he streamlines the case, whether he does a superseding indictment, those are all strategic decisions that we'll see in the upcoming weeks, but this case is not dead. So as you can see, old Donnie is ramping up his call for a revenge tour against everyone that helped to put him in jail and help 
uh, keep him out of office, helped throw him out of office, uh, have been critical of him. And, you know, that likely includes, this is my opinion here, but this likely includes the jury that convicted him, the prosecutors, the witnesses, high profile political enemies on both sides of the aisle, uh, top Democrats, but also as we see direct calls against, you know, top Republicans like Cheney, who is basically Republican royalty through the Cheney family and all of that, right? And here's the thing. He may, he may, he may have more of a credence to, to enact his revenge tour, given the ruling we saw just yesterday. Now, of course, we would need to actually have it tested in court. It may well be the case, you know, the hypothetical example given, you know, using uh, some branch of the Secret Service or federal police or the military uh, to uh, arrest or assassinate one's political enemies, uh, a juror, a uh, prosecutor, uh, even if Trump as commander in chief orders the military to do it, it might well be argued by a court, even this insane conservative Supreme Court, that that's actually just too much of a wanton abuse. It stretches the bounds of reasonableness. But here's the thing. Can we be guaranteed that? Look in your heart. Can you say with 100% certainty that this court would 100% say, actually, no, there's no immunity there. And further, it also matters what Trump and or his supporters believe. Because if Trump believes he's immune and his supporters believe that effectively King Trump is above the law, then not only will they be more emboldened to do violence in his name, they might also think he'll pardon me for wanton crimes and Donald Trump selling pardons, abusing the pardon power, taking bribes for pardons, whatever, he'll probably be immune from that. So either Trump does the violence or orders it or excuses the people that did it. We are in dark times.